So, you're searching for the highest quality bloods for your base. With the new Secrets of Gloomrot update for both your servants and to simply get 100% on demand. From efficient farming routes to get it to your base in no time. This will be your ultimate guide to it. How you can keep your prisoners well fed and have an unlimited supply of the best blood available. Let's get right to it. All right, so here we are in my vampire castle. The very first thing you want to do is prepare before you even start searching for the right blood, as you want to make sure you can teleport it to your base as quick as possible without having to struggle. And for that, I recommend you to craft some dust collars. These come in stacks of five with three scourge stones and 45 hell's clarion. Probably my hands are new favorite item in the game. It allows you to summon a swarm of bats and transport a subdued human back to one of your unoccupied prisons. So right here, I have my little blood area with a 100% worker, 100% rogue, as well as a 100% warrior. 93% brute and recently found a 85 scholar. I still have room for one more blood. So what I'm gonna do right here is place two more cages. I mean, you never know. We might get lucky with the high quality blood hunt. So you wanna have some extra spare cages for additional humans. Now, for the best places to get your hands on high quality blood. First off, really depends on where you want to use these servants for. Do you want them to farm for late game resources? Well, then of course, you want to make sure that they come from the Gloomrot area and the Silverlight area. As if you assign them to areas from the same zone, they will get bonus loot with a passive ability. And I think it's also interesting to hunt for some from the Dunley farmlands, as you're still going to need a lot of the wool thread, which you can see right here. For Blood Moon Repair, you're going to need pristine leather, silk and ghost yarn. And for ghost yarn, you're going to need that wool thread. My favorite high quality blood hunting areas in the Dunley farmlands are the Dombrake village because of its high density of humans as well as the Bastion of Dunley. And especially for Scholar blood, if you're looking for a 100%, you want to go to the Moswick village and also visit the cathedral or monastery in Dunley. I usually take my vampire steed, activate blood hunger so I can see all the blood qualities in the area and walk up the hill. As at the very end of it, you will find a building with even more scholars. If they are not high quality, I just take out every single one of them. Or if I'm in a rush, I just jump down right here and walk towards the north to the Denley Monastery. Right here, you will take holy radiation damage. So you either want to take holy potions with you, or if you're already in the late game, it's going to be pretty easy to heal yourself up with sanguine coil. With my horse, I always run around the monastery, check out all the blood qualities and then run inside it. As right here, you will find plenty more scholars. Again, if they're low quality, just take out every single one of them, wait for them to respawn. And next time you might have a chance on a higher quality blood. This is where I find my 85% scholar, which I'm pretty happy with. While you want to keep doing this until you have the 100. Just to the north of it, you will have a very accessible vampire waygate, which you can use to travel to the next interesting farming zone. As, of course, you want to get the most out of the night times to hunt for high quality blood. During the day, this can be a little bit more problematic. For high quality blood in the Silverlight Hills, you primarily want to focus on these army outposts to the north, very close to the Fortress of Light, while the highest density of humans can be found in Brighthaven. This is a pretty big village filled with NPCs, which I always visit, summon your mount and then use the blood hanger to quickly check out all the different blood qualities. If it's daytime, I definitely recommend you to visit the Sacred Silver Mine, as this one has a high density of humans as well, with different blood types. You can do a quick tour right here, and if you're done, just take out your bat form, as then it's pretty easy to escape the place without taking any damage or having to deal with the boss. Anyways, right now my hands down favorite place to hunt for high quality blood. Gloomrot, as right here you will find plenty of places which are contested all the time. First and foremost, you want to focus on these little transcendent camps, as there you will have these yellow pools where mutants can spawn, and these can be found all over the map, especially around the transcendent machine factory and the transcendent mine. While my hands down favorite place for them would be the pools of rebirth, as right here you will find all different blood types warrior, rogue, scholar, brutes, you name it. They will be fighting mutants all the time, so the blood qualities will refresh as well. 
well. Look at that. We just got a 95% muted popping up. While if you don't find anything in the pools of rebirth, I also recommend you to follow the path to the south and visit the Rustlock village. This one also has a high density of all the different blood types. While after you've visited that one, just follow the road more towards the south go past every single Transcendent camp and then towards the Transcendent mine. It will only take seconds to cover this place while afterwards you want to follow the road towards the rest of the Transcendent camps to the Transcendent machine factory. As right here, even during daytime, it's going to be pretty easy to stay in the shadows and find many different blood types. I think this is a fantastic route to just do every couple minutes on the server or do it every day, especially when bad people are clearing all the mobs. So we're just visiting the outside area, then quickly run inside. We're just going to make a circle and this is where you will find even more humans. Just run inside and look at that. We've got a 57 brood popping up. After you've done that, you can quickly visit the Transcendent Power Plant and a Thunder Strike Peak to fill up your batteries and then leave the place with a Vampire Waygate. So you've seen everything in just a couple minutes. While 100% would be ideal, I think it's already interesting to focus on 80 and 90% plus. With the 80% blood, you can only get three tiers of your blood quality. While with 90% blood or higher, you get four bonuses or perks from your blood type. But yeah, with a 100% blood type, you will boost all above effects by 30%. Also want to have with every single one of them. I'm also going to quickly check out Dawnbreak Village as it's been a long time since I've been to this place. As you can see right here, we have a 92% rogue. Again, Dawnbreak Village is such an awesome place to quickly visit as well. It will only take you a couple seconds and right here, you can also come across many different scholars. Now the sun is rising, so we're going to quickly check out the mine. A 77%. Ooh, look at that. A 99% rogue. So we're just going to walk backwards, wait for all the bad guys to run away, basically. You can quickly take out this guy. If you're afraid of killing them with a couple hits, you just want to make sure you disarm. Take your dominant human form and floops. I already have a 100% rogue, but we can use this one as a servant. I kind of like the taser. So what we're going to do is use our dusk collar so we can easily teleport this dude to our base. Look at that, a taser. I think these are pretty cool to have to send on a mission or in general to tap blood from. And yes, right now we can also craft irradiant gruels, which have a chance to increase the blood quality of your prisoner by one to 2%. But you also have a high chance of turning your prisoner into a mutant. So you will basically ruin the blood. For a 98 or 99%, it is worth the shot. While if you have lower quality blood and have to do this multiple times to get it to 100, I don't think it's worth the risk. As you basically have more than one third of a chance that this will go wrong. So for your high quality blood around the 80s or beginning 90s, just wait for a replacement. Find the same blood quality and then you can start experimenting with it, but only do so if it's almost at 100 to minimize the chances of it turning into a mutant. Also, be sure to feed your prisoners enough. I can't stress this out. You don't want to ruin your high quality blood. It's already going to be a lot more efficient to tap blood merlots instead of blood potions as they will add less misery to your humanoids and they will also lose less HP. If they already lost a large chunk of HP with low misery, you can just feed them fat gobies as this recovers all the HP. While if they already lost a bit and are a little bit miserable, you want to use the sage fish. So the two fish you want to focus on are fat gobies for HP and sage fish to do both. While rainbow trout, not very interesting. If you just want to restore a little bit of HP, rats are also recommended as they can be farmed pretty easily inside your base. And sacred grapes, yeah, from the Silverlight Hills. Be sure to always have enough for multiple encounters for both PvE and PvP, so you can take them whenever you want to do certain things. Worker Blood, if you want to farm a lot of resources, Warrior, Brute and Rogue for melee combat, but can also be used in combination with spellcasting, for which you primarily want to have Scholar Blood. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A big thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful. And yeah, if you want to see more V Rising, more guides can be found in the description and in my V Rising playlist. Be sure to share your favorite blood type in the comments down below. Would love to hear what you're rolling with in your build. Right now, though, it's 4 a.m. out. Want to wish you an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.